I'm sure at some point in your life, you have probably fished a Ned Rig before. A Ned Rig is a, a super deadly technique to go out there and catch a ton of bass. It's one of the lures that I always pick up when I can't get bit. When I am struggling to go out there and catch a fish, no matter what time of the year it is, I will pick up a Ned Rig and at least get bit, which gives me some confidence to just keep on fishing. But with a Ned Rig, there's kind of four bigger mistakes that I feel like a lot of anglers make with this bait. And I think that if you can kind of clear up some of these mistakes, that you will start catching more fish and just have a lot more fun out there on the water. So today I wanna to talk about those and I'm gonna start with the first mistake, which is actually your hook. Now, to me, this is one of the most important aspects of your Ned Rig because what I've seen, a lot of the, the Ned heads out there on the market, they have kind of a, a really very finesse hook on them. And the reason that a lot of these have a finesse hook on them is it, it really makes that bait look natural on the bottom. If you don't have a really bulky hook, then it, it allows the plastic to really stand that jig head up and it makes it look really, really good out there on the water. But the thing about those really finesse light wire hooks is they will bend out on you from time to time, especially if you are fishing for bigger fish. Like if you fish up in the Great Lakes, you know this for sure, cause you're fishing for a lot of four to six pound smallmouth um, with those little hooks. But no matter where you live in the country, if you can potentially catch a big bass on a Ned Rig, the last thing you wanna do is lose that fish. And so the, the one thing about a hook that I have found is that you don't want one that is way too finesse. You don't want the extreme super light wire. You also don't want the ones that are really, really heavy. Again, because that will make that Ned jig kind of, or the, uh, the rig itself kind of lay on the bottom, which makes it not as effective when you're out there fishing. Now, the one that I have kind of grown to love, I actually make my own, but I actually put an owner hook in them. And owner actually makes, and I'm not sponsored by owner or anything like that, but owner makes a Ned head and I'll leave a link down below in the description for it. But this to me is a really good jig head. It's got kind of that medium, it's, it's not too heavy of a hook. It's not too light of a hook. It still allows that bait to do what it needs to, but it is not going to bend out on you. And so that's really, really important because even if that hook doesn't bend, if, if that hook bends just a little bit, when you set the hook, you're going to lose a lot of fish and that's not what we want to do at all with a Ned Riggs. Now, before I get on to mistake number two, I do want to let you guys know that I just have a few more days left in my sale for my Fin Fishing Apparel clothing. This is a USA made sun shirt. It's one of the only USA made sun shirts out there on the market. And right now they are heavily discounted for the holidays. I know we're after Christmas here, but this sale goes into the 31st of December. So just for a few more days. So if you guys want to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, pick up some sun shirts, pick up some hats, pick up some gloves. They're all discounted. Thanks. The next thing that is kind of a bigger mistake that a lot of anglers also make with the Ned Rig is not mixing up the size of the bait they are fishing. This is something that I am also guilty of a lot because when I decide I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna fish a Ned Rig, what do I do a lot of times is probably the same thing that you do. I'm gonna pick up that, that Ned head, that Ned turd, that 2.75 inch bait, and I'm just gonna go out there and start fishing it. But I feel like a lot of people do that. They pick up that exact same turd, that 2.75 inch bait. And I'm not saying that this is not gonna catch you fish because there's a reason why everybody picks it up. But I have seen on some of the lakes that are around me, I live in Ohio, it's very highly pressured bodies of water around me, that that particular size bait seems to get less and less bites every single year. And I think it's solely because the bass have seen a million of them. The bass have seen so many of that exact same bait that they know they do get conditioned to those baits when they've been caught on them time and time again. So to me, one of the biggest things that you can do to kind of to still get bites on that Ned rig is simply making the size of your bait 
a little bit different. So something that I do, and it looks really, really funny from time to time, is cut that bait down, make it really small. Actually cut about an inch off of that 2.75 inch bait. You're gonna make it now only, I mean, just less than two inches. It really makes that bait small, but I feel like that now gets as many bites as when that Ned Rig first came out. So that's something that I like to do. Another thing is go the exact opposite way. Choose the bigger Ned heads and the bigger Ned baits out there on the market. Z-Man actually makes a six inch version of their TRD. It's the, the Mega TRD. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below in the description for this, but this is a bait especially if you fish for big largemouth on the bodies of water that you fish, not even big largemouth. If you fish for largemouth, you should pick up some of these six inch Ned baits because they to me have kind of replaced like my shaky head or even sometimes a big worm. If, if, if you fish a lot on like the Tennessee River lakes where you're fishing a lot of those ledges, you know, a lot of times we like to fish a deep diving crankbait and then you transition to like a football jig or maybe a big worm. This bait, the six inch TRD is a phenomenal follow-up bait that will get bites when none of those other baits get bites. It's literally just like a Magnum Ned rig. And I actually learned this by a number of years ago, I was fishing a Bassmaster open on Lake Chickamauga. And one of the co-anglers that I had was a, 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 a Japanese fella and he was fishing this big, net, this big, big Ned down there and getting a lot of bites behind me. I was very, very impressed by it. It's something that I've kind of kept in the back of my pocket, but it's a great way to just go out there, be different with your Neds and catch a lot more fish. Now the third tip, the third mistake that I see a lot of anglers also make with this uh, technique is fishing it way too fast. And I think that this kind of came about because when, when the Ned Rigs really first came out, it was so easy to get bit on these baits that you could fish it no matter, like you could fish it anyway and you're gonna catch bass on it. You could drag it, you could hop it, you could do a bunch of stuff with it. But now it seems like to me, uh, again, with kind of changing the size of my bait is fishing this bait dead slow, as slow as you can. And this was actually kind of the, the, the reason that the Ned like really kind of came about is because the guy who invented it, he, he was fishing it uber, uber slow, like casting it out, fishing it extremely slow across the bottom and catching a ton of fish. Now, one way that you can help yourself to fish this bait slow and help you to get more bites is by using the smallest jig head size that you can get away with. I, uh, for a long time, kind of grew accustomed to always fishing the sixth ounce size, the one sixth. And then I started stepping it down to the one eighth because I really felt like I got more bites. And then I went even smaller than that. And so sometimes if you're fishing out there in deeper water or you're fishing when it's kind of windy out, it's a very, very hard to fish one of those really, really light baits, like a 16th ounce or a 32nd ounce. But if you can get away with fishing that light of a jig head, I'm telling you, it will get a ton of bites. And that's again, for two reasons. One, it's lighter. It looks more natural on the bottom Two, It forces you to slow down. And the slower that you fish these baits, the more bites that you are going to get. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive because a lot of times in bass fishing, we talk about, Hey, if you, the faster you can fish, the more, chances you're going to put your bait in front of a fish. But if you get into an area where you know there's fish and you're slowing that bait way down, I'm telling you, you're going to catch every fish that is in that little area. The very last tip that I want to give you guys is not only can you fish this bait kind of slow across the bottom, but you can also swim a Ned rig. This is a very effective bait I found out by accident and literally casting this bait out, creeping it along the bottom or even kind of mid strolling it. And I fish it a lot of the exact same way that I would a jig head minnow. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the jig head minnow, kind of that Ned Miki technique, I'm gonna leave a link right here for a video that I did all about this technique. And it's a great way to go out there and catch highly pressured 
fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.